Wealth creation not only requires professional skill but also the wisdom to understand the ways of the universe. You need to learn and live by certain laws that govern human destiny. The physical universe is governed by physical laws such as gravity while the mental and spiritual universe are governed by spiritual laws. If you do not know these laws, you experience roadblocks on your life's path of progress. One of the laws says the law of right perception. As is your perception, so is your reality. If your perception of the universe is that it is mechanistic, lifeless, so will the universe be to you. If on the other hand, your perception is that the universe is a living entity and is a sentient being, you enter a world of possibilities, immense possibilities. You are actually living in a responding universe. The universe is nothing but consciousness. You are consciousness. The other is consciousness. All that is, is consciousness. Consciousness is sentient. What does this consciousness say? It says, I manifest your perception. It says, I am that. That refers to your perception. I refers to consciousness. Consciousness is like the ocean. Perceptions are like the waves that arise and subside on this ocean. If your perception says there cannot be financial abundance owing to the economic crisis, the sentient universe will say, so be it, and you experience scarcity. If you adopt a negative perception that times are bad, world is dangerous and unsafe, for me, you are going to be tense and unhappy, which would in turn manifest a problematic situation in life. If your perception, on the other hand, is that there is abundance everywhere, the universe will throw open her treasures, no matter what the external circumstances are. Remember, great leaders hold great perceptions and hence create extraordinary realities. Let me tell you a story to help you understand the power of perception. A blind man earned his living by selling burgers on the streets. As chance would have had it, his business went well 
and provided him enough money to set up shop. Over a period of time, his business boomed and he set up a chain of shops and employed a few people as well. As fortune was thus shining over him, his son came back having completed his university education. He said, Father, don't you know what's happening in the world today? There is an economic recession. The father asked, Son, what does economic recession mean? The son explained how people were losing jobs and businesses were failing. Following his son's suggestion to cut down on expenses, the old man issued orders that the quality be brought down to save money. With the decline in quality, sales declined too, and the old man thought it better to close down a few of the shops. The lesser the inflow of cash, greater the wisdom he found in his son's suggestion and brought down the quality further. More disgruntled customers and more shops were closed. At last, the old man was left with a meager business. The old man very proudly told his neighbor, my son was right. The world is indeed going through a recession. The poor man believed his son. Well, this story is not suggesting you to ignore what's happening around you, but to have the wisdom to see that based on your perceptions arise your emotions. Based on your perceptions arise your decisions and based on your perceptions arise your actions. Based on your perception arises your destiny. Time for a little reflection. What are your perceptions on life? What is life for you? A routine? A roller coaster? A blessing? What are your perceptions on wealth? What do you feel about money? Difficult to earn? Evil? Power? Not for me? Or waiting for me? Extend this exercise to every area of life such as work, relationships, health. In the process of creating a right perception towards wealth, we should also understand the difference between money making and wealth creation. Making money is an unenlightened pursuit. You could gamble and make money or go racing and make money. While wealth creation, on the other hand, is a spiritual activity. Wealth ultimately is the ability to add value to things and people. Let us say you set up an academy to train young minds in order to create productive citizens. You are creating wealth for the nation. You create an industry. You are helping employ many people and are also strengthening the social fabric into being richer. Wealth always has a tendency to percolate. When you indulge in wealth creation with intelligence and integrity, money is an automatic byproduct. Time for reflections. What are your ideas for wealth creation? Are there any ideas that arose in your mind for wealth creation which you ignored in the past? Write them down and meditate on bringing them into action. Do this exercise every day this week. Try to hold great perceptions with tenacity and you will see tiny shifts occurring in your life.
had a lot of problems in my career. I always wanted to be successful in my career, but I was always having a lot of problems, unexpected hurdles coming in my career. Every six months, I was changing a job. I was changing the field I was working in. I was not very sure what I wanted to do and how to become successful in my career. At that time, I heard about the Swanas University and I came here to attend a process. I always thought that nothing was wrong in my life, everything was perfect, my relationships were perfect and everything was fine. In the process, I learned many things about myself. One of the most important lessons that I learned in the process was my relationship with my father. I always had the misperception that since my father wanted a son and I was born as a daughter to him, he had never fully accepted me. And all the failures in life, all my problems, I always attributed it to this factor and I always judged my father and kept saying that because you did not accept me is why I'm suffering in my life. During the process, I realized that it was just a misperception and that my father always loved me and had accepted me for what I am. Once I realized this, I sought his forgiveness wholeheartedly and I felt tremendous relief. And another important thing that I realized was that all this while, what I had for my father was probably respect and fear. And I, and my, I interacted with him out of respect and fear. It was never with love. But after the process, I discovered true love. I discovered what love from parents truly mean to me and to them. After the process, I went home very, as a very happy and contented person. And once I went back to Dubai, I got another job offer, which was again completely a different field, something in which I've never worked before. I was very apprehensive because I did not know how I would fare in this new job that I have got. But I found to my great uh, relief that I've fared very well in my job, in my career. And normally what a person would achieve after six or seven years of working in the industry, I managed at a very short period of time. I got promotions and recognitions which normally doesn't come by anybody. And today I work as an account director. I have a team under me. I have become very successful in my career and a very contented person as, as well. I feel that finally I've become a leader in my industry. I've also become a good daughter to my parents and a good mother to my children. As I used to face many problems as a youth, one of them was the problem of relationships. I always used to feel I have a very good relationship with my mom, my dad, and I understand them very well. Being away from them, staying away, let them be in their own life, let me be in my own life was a concept which I used to follow. When I came in here for the course of Mahadiksha, I got an awareness. I discovered that I am literally running away from my parents and I have no connection or relation with my dad as a son or no connection or no relation with my mom as a son. And hence, the same used to come back from my mom and dad. So through the process, I literally discovered the love for dad, the love for mom. And when I went back to my home, I started communicating with love with dad and mom. They were very shocked. What has happened to this person? He's behaving like this. But in a few days, a miracle happened. Strangely, my mom and dad also started behaving with me in a similar way with the love and care, which I used to go on with. And this brought a drastic change in my life. Hence, all relationships were set right at home. My home has become a dream world for me. With the work of oneness, making the real headway from the time it began in Indonesia, in the year 2008, many have come to realize the true essence of oneness in everything they do. It was a place where more than 5,000 people gathered to participate in the oneness event. The gathering was addressed by Sri Bimal Kirtiji, one of the prime disciples of Sri Amma Bhagavan. So today, from today, you... He spoke at length about integrating oneness principles 
in order to have a qualitative change in the experience of life. The Adrasal was followed by hundreds of people receiving the oneness blessing. April 24th to May 2nd, 2009 witnessed the coming together of the Oneness family celebrating the first anniversary of the World Oneness Center, a structure built with a unique vision of affecting human consciousness. The highlight of the 10-day long celebrations was the Divya Mangala Darshans of Sri Amma Bhagwan that happened through the event. Devotees who thronged the venue were blessed by Sri Amma Bhagwan to gain good health, to prosper, to have loving relationships and move to a higher state of consciousness. The event marked the beginning of the Oneness Meditations at the World Oneness Center. Earlier, I used to even get scared to talk to new people or even two or three new people. I would feel, I would get reserved, I would not uh, be free in talking to people. But after attending the process, the confidence level in me has increased a lot. Now, I, I can give a talk to even more than 100 of people at a time. And that is the confidence level which has increased in me after the process. Regarding problems, earlier for every small thing I would think that I am the only person in this world who has problems and I, I would feel that they are a very big thing and I would suffer about that. But in the process I have seen that problems were only in my mind and I used to perceive them in that way. And I realized that problems, suffering was in the perception and not in the fact. From that moment onwards I started dealing with my problems. Earlier I used to always think that I have problems, I have problems and I would be with that. But after the process, I know what it is. I don't focus on the problem but I focus on the solution. And now I'm confident in facing any problem in life or any task in life. And such uh, confidence in, uh, level is increased in me. I'm really grateful f uh, to Amma Bhagwan uh, for giving me those beautiful teachings in life and making me a really successful person. I'm a kind of a person who basically have very low self-esteem, who lack confidence and who don't move with people very easily. So this is what I am before I was attending the youth course. Once I attended the youth course, things were totally different. Bhagwan totally changed my consciousness in such a way that now I'm a person who's having a very good self-esteem about myself, who are brimming with confidence, I'm brimming with confidence and now I'm able to take up greater challenges in my life without any problems. So eventually all these things uh, led me to take up a greater career in my life. Now I am able to proudly say that I have taken a position called head HR in a company where all the decisions of the company are made by me. So this thanks to Amman Bhagwan for giving me such a wonderful opportunity and the confidence to do this.